கரைத்திடவே தேகம் தாண்டி உண்மை உணர வேண்டி உயிர் ஜனன மரணம் அதில் அழியாமல் தன்னை உணர இங்கு தவிக்கும் உயிர்களுக்கு யோகம் தந்த என் குருமணியே மௌனம் ஒழியும் இரு கருணை விழியும் என தகதை அழியவென வருகிறதே Ideally, there should be one doctor for every thousand people. But in India, it's about half. That is about every 2,000 people have one doctor. Despite this disparity, most of us uh, dream of going abroad and living in the comforts of the West. Sadhguru, what are the changes we should bring at both the national level as well as in the medical field to control uh, this brain drain and talent drain uh, in the country? I would treat these two things, the first part of the question and the second separately. Uh, every two thousand people need one doctor, I don't like that. You're saying there's not enough? Every thousand you need one, is it? Oh, I don't like that at all. I would like every five or ten thousand people has one doctor, that means they're healthy. Uh, recently, because we are working to see how to bring preventive uh, care into hospitals, large hospitals, so we are working with a large group, the Apollo group. The chairperson came to meet me along with his whole team and he was telling me situations how young doctors, particularly cardiologists, having heart attacks and dying. He was talking about an incident where a thirty-year-old doctor was driving home. On the way, there was a… their own cardiac care center, something was there. But he did not realize that he needs it, because you always think somebody else needs it, all right. He went home, parked his car, got down, took three steps, collapsed right there in front of his home house door. By the time his wife came and opened the door, he died. Like this, he said, these things are happening very often. When this came up, I just started thinking, oh, do we have such a possibility? Because we have over four, five thousand people living in the yoga center, and every day at least uh, ten to twelve thousand people are coming and going. Then I looked back and saw, we've not had a single heart attack in the last twenty-seven years. Nobody died. Then I said, except for a few old people beyond a certain age, no young person ever had a heart attack here, especially they did not die of cardiac stuff. Then Sadhguru, that's why I'm here. <laughs> so I don't like for every thousand people one doctor. Maybe it'll give you a job, but it is not necessary. We need to bring a culture of health how we eat, how we sit, how we stand, how we breathe. If you bring this into the social life, you won't need so many doctors. See, I want you to understand, I'm not saying this with any prejudice against you, my father is a physician, all right? Among many things that you do, professions, various professions that we do, this is very vital service when people are unhealthy or people are unwell or something happens. But at the same time, for any given society, it is not a productive possibility. It is because people are getting damaged in some way, you're fixing, all right? So do you need better cars on the road or do you need more mechanic shops? It's something we must decide, isn't it? <laughs> we need to cultivate a better sense of health. Health, everybody must understand, is their basic responsibility. It is not medical industry's responsibility. It is every individual should understand, this is my responsibility to be healthy. This must be built from early childhood. I'll tell you, if everybody invests just thirty minutes every day for their physical well-being, simple process if they do, most of them won't go to the doctor, they the frequency of going to the doctor will come down dramatically, dramatically. So every thousand people need one doctor, I don't go by that. To keep him busy, they must be falling sick, isn't it? 
Because once he sits there, you have to keep him busy. It's a… it's an investment of a person in the nation. So, if we work for healthy societies, we don't need so much of medicine. Definitely we need it. No human being will go through their life without ever being sick, all right? It'll always happen. But at the same time, how sick do you get? How often do you get sick? This is not to say boastful things, but in these thirty-seven years that I've been active, that literally every day, seven days of the week, three and sixty-five days, I have a schedule, normally eighteen to twenty hours a day. I have not cancelled one event because I was not well. This doesn't mean I didn't catch a flu, this doesn't mean I didn't catch a flu, it doesn't mean I didn't get some fever, it doesn't mean I didn't get a toothache, all this happened. But they never stopped my schedules, they don't even today. Because there is a way a human being can take charge of their own bodies, their own minds. If we don't bring this into the society, then we've just lowered the human potential especially in our country, because I want you to understand in this country the only… the only resource you have is human resource. People and population is all you have. For 1.4 billion people, you don't have a piece of land for everybody. You don't have enough mountains, you don't have enough rivers, you don't have enough forests, you don't even have a piece of sky for 1.4 billion people. Yes. But we have people. If we upgrade these people to a higher level of performance and living, we could be a miracle. But if you leave them just like that, unfocused, unhealthy and whatever, we are a recipe for disaster. Yes or no? All we have is people. So upgrading the people involves various things, but the most fundamental thing is health. The people are healthy. Today, there are issues of malnourishment, there are issues of people by choice eating bad food. Above all, one of the biggest problems with India is they are not physically active. There is no culture of fitness. Most, uh, you know, every year we… we trek in Kailash, thirty-five to forty Indian tourists die every year because of altitude issues. I take the largest groups, we are literally seventeen or eighteen percent of the Kailash uh, Yatris who go there, from Isha that many people go there. But we don't have a single casualty because we make sure people are in a certain condition, certain practices are taken care of, certain discipline is there. Today because of constant year after year Indian people dying, the Chinese government put a new rule last year saying that Indians over seventy years of age cannot visit Kailash anymore. But if you are an American, you can go, if you are a German, you can go, if you are an Australian, you can go, if you are whatever else, you can go. Only Indians over seventy cannot go because Indians just die. How's that? It's a statement on us, how we are. So especially those of you who are into becoming doctors, First and foremost thing is you must exude health, huh? If a patient sees you, you must look radiant and healthy, isn't it? You are only… <laughs> she was telling me, why are they all sitting like this? She says, no, no, we are medical students, we are supposed to be serious <laughs> If somebody comes and tells you a patient is serious, how do you understand that they are on the way out? If you are serious, what does it mean? Same thing, hello? There is substantial medical and scientific evidence to show that only when you are in a pleasant state of experience, your body and your brain works at its best. And for the sake of people who become your patients, so that they don't turn into your victims, it's very important that your body and your brain works at its best. 
Hello? It must… it must work at its best. For this, it's very important, if you sit here, you're peaceful and joyful by your own nature. This much you must do for yourself. Before you touch somebody else, if I want to touch you, my hands must be clean, isn't it? Huh? It's a simple humanity. Before I touch somebody else, my hands should be clean. So before you talk about other people's health, you must be an emblem of health. You must do this to yourself. It's very, very important and it will make a world of difference for the people that you treat.